how were you able to offer compassion and love to your mom on her own journey that she walks in life? Because I hear so much compassion and love that you have toward mm-hmm. her. And you, you, you had a hurtful past. What, what did mm-hmm. that look like for you? And I know this is sensitive. So thank you so much for sharing because yeah. it may help one of my people today. Oh, of course. Um, I just to stop real quick and tell you, like, I'm really excited for what, for what the podcast has to offer. Cause you ask these questions that like really target, like the parts of life that people don't talk about. Yeah. So I just want to stop and tell you, I appreciate you for that. Um, but yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's a really difficult question. I've spent my whole life figuring out how to answer. And the question that has always come up in my head month after month after month after month, especially after becoming a Christian, because the honest answer, and, and I'm going to share the ugly with you because we can't get to the, the good side without being in the ugly first. There were times where I would wish my mother dead. There were times where I would imagine the horrible ways that she might go. And it's just it's just sad, you know, like it's sad that I was in that space. It's sad that there was so much hurt. It's sad that she doesn't have control over what she believes is real or not real, you know? And so it was just sad all around. Like she hurt me, I would try to hurt her. And then it would just become this like really bad cycle. Um, But one of the things, like once I became a Christian, you know, there's like all these programs to forgive and all this. And And at first I know, I know the feeling if you're listening and you're like, but I can't forgive this person. I could never forgive them. I know what that feels like because I was like, I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand the meaning of the word forgiveness. Like I don't get it, you know? And there was a couple of different phases for me. And I think it's different for everybody. It's important to acknowledge that if your process doesn't look like this, that's okay because you're unique just the way I'm unique, you know? But, but for me, The first thing was like, I don't even understand what forgiveness is because I was never offered forgiveness or grace growing up. I just wasn't. And so I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. All I know is revenge. All I know is you get back. All I know is you hurt back or whatever. And so it took me a while to even grasp what that meant. And then from there, it was like, I think, I don't know. I think, I think Jesus kind of bypassed the whole forgiveness thing with me for a second. And he was like, okay, fine. But in the word, it says to honor your mother and father. And I remember for years struggling with that. What does it mean to honor your mother and father? And I'm like, okay, I get that. Cool. If my mother and father were saints, if they weren't sinners, or if they were just your average one of the mill sinners and not these like horrible people, you know, my dad is fine, but my mom, you know, if she's not this horrible person. And so I I researched that for so long and I was seeking answers to how do I honor my mother and father? How do I honor my mother and father? And I, I don't know how or when, but I think just praying for and asking God, like, God, I'm not forgiving right now. I just am asking for you to help me to even want to forgive. Like I'm not touching it. I'm just asking you for desire to want to even look at it. And so slowly, like, I, I don't know, it's a, it's a work of the Holy spirit, you know, but there came a point, I don't know, I was in Bible study or something. And it just brought me to tears because it's like it, the whole weight of the suffering that she had to have gone through in order to be the person who does this to their children. Like, God, it's just so sad. Like the life she lives is so sad, Mm -hmm. you know? And even though to this day, she tries to manipulate me if I'm on the phone, even for two minutes, like, it's such a sad place that it comes from. And it just, I just broke my heart that like on top of all her hurt, God had helped me to overcome all of that. And I'm just going to leave her in the ditch. Like, I'm not going to try to like pull her up. I'm not going to try to like say, Hey, maybe you weren't strong enough to figure this out. Or maybe you're still suffering with this mental illness, but like, let me try to help, you know? Mm-hmm. So there was a whole period of my life where I, I gave her money. I, 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 inv- I, there's thousands upon thousands of dollars that have been in all sincerity wasted because she's not well. 
And that's when I started learning, okay, you can love your mother and father and you can honor them with, with boundaries, mm. you know, because she only gets one life. God gave her one life. He didn't give her two and three and four. And so she can't run my life too. And so I've had to let go and say, if you lose your house, I have to be okay with that because you've made those decisions, you know? And it's hard. It's, it, I know I can feel people judging me being like, you're going to let your mom lose your house or, you know, whatever. But like, when you've been through this for 30 years and the answer on the other side never changes, you have to accept some stuff. You have to. And I, I just, I pray for her and I feel for her. And I just have to set that boundary that like, God only gave you one life to live. That's and you really can only good. make decisions for that one life. That's really good. Oh, there's so many things that you just said that just, it just resonates and agrees so much with my mm-hmm. spirit. And, you know, that one piece where you were talking about, you can't believe, um, you didn't believe that about yourself. It was like you were bridging a gap there and that you were able to bridge that gap and began to believe differently. And then also mm-hmm. you're talking about her and how she, um, you know, that boundary that you have to set. And I think in, in offering compassion and love and prayer to her helps you set that boundary, but draw that circle around yourself and say, I've got to decide for me in this circle, mm-hmm. what does health and healing look like? Because you were also on your own healing journey. And if you're constantly trying to control someone else and help them to heal, you can't truly focus on your own circle unless you give the boundaries to other people and that that are healthy. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying push people out of your life because isolation for people who've gone through trauma is such a huge piece of their life. But at yeah. the same time, drawing your circle, put those healthy boundaries there with people that you love and you care about that are also on their journey. And they don't know how to draw their circle, but show them love and compassion. It's so, so important. It's so, so, so important. So good. 